words about where we are and, and how we see the industry. Uh, and uh, to start with some background information about the Embraer. Uh, the country was founded, founded in 1969. The country was founded as a state-owned company and was privatized in 1994. Uh, about 55% of our shares, they're traded in New York Stock Exchange and about 45% in Sao Paulo Stock Exchange. We have about 20, 25,000 shareholders and we are one of the few true uh, Brazilian corporations. We have no control group and uh, we have, of course, to take care of ourselves as far as uh, uh, building our future. We traditionally are very known by our airline uh, part participation in the airline industry. Uh, we started with the 19-seater Bandeirantes and then we developed the 30-seater pressurized turboprop in Brazil in the 80s. And at that time, the country really started to grow on the airline side more than on the defense side. To a point that uh, just a few years ago, defense was just about 5% of our revenues. Um, so today, we have three main businesses uh, in which we participate, the airline still being the largest. Uh, we are also in business jazz for the last 10, 12 years. Uh, we are the, the new kid uh, on the block from the business jazz. We are a relatively new entrant and still learning a lot. And we have been revamping our defense business in the last few years. So uh, we understand that diversification in our case is probably the sound strategy, and that's the, the direction we are heading to. And uh, talking about diversification, uh, in, the, in the early 2000s, we uh, decided to uh, develop a variant of our ERJ-135 business uh, uh, commercial jet, uh, and we built this prototype, which became the, the legacy, at that time it was just the legacy, now it's the legacy 600, uh, airplane. Um, the airplane was for us was a fundamental step towards making a much bolder decision uh, in 2005 to really invest in the in the business jets uh, industry, having a legacy of commercial jets uh, did give us some uh, strengths as far as design capability, as far as understanding the importance of customer input, as far as understanding the importance of reliability, technical reliability, endurance. So we thought that uh, that, coupled with the experience with the legacy in the early days, we could probably uh, venture ourselves into becoming a real player in the, in the business jet arena. And that, this is still our our vision, our strategic vision, to become uh, one of the major players in that industry. In 2005, uh, a very important decision uh, was made by the company vis-à-vis uh, -vis the what should be our next product. Obviously, the, the large cabin aircraft, the long-range aircraft, are the, the, the sweet spots of the industry. And uh, we, we believed that uh, we could probably have the technical expertise to develop an airplane for that segment. But I think correctly so, we understood and we still understand that it takes a lot more than just having a nice aircraft to be successful. It takes a brand recognition, it takes an absolutely uh, reliable and capital uh, customer support structure, infrastructure around the world. And uh, I think, uh, understanding that, we decided to go actually from, from the first step of the ladder, developing entry-level jets, which became the, the Fino uh, family, the Fino 100 and the 300. So a few years ago, we sat, uh, you know, having those two Product, product line, so having the Phenoms and the Legacy 600-650 and uh, with a big void in between. And again, sticking to our long-term vision, we engaged in developing uh, 
some mid-size cabin jets, uh, the latest 450 x 500, which are in development as we speak. And those jets will be in the market uh, end of next year and also in 2014 with the second, the second model. So with that, we will have a broader and a more comprehensive product line. And uh, we've been investing in parallel significantly also on the customer support side. It is very, very different to support a customer on the airline industry than it is to support a customer on the, on the, on the business jet uh, industry. Uh, some, some aspects are more difficult in one, some are more difficult in the other, but I think the, one of the good lessons we learned is that we have to understand that those are very separate uh, customers, very separate industries. The customer behavior is different, the customer experience is different, so we have to adapt uh, to that. So the challenge, the real challenge is how to leverage your strengths and still make the proper focus on different, uh, different businesses. Well, we are, ups, we are, as all of us in this room, very passionate about, uh, about aviation. It's uh, something which is uh, over a century now, but still marvel all of us, I'm sure. And uh, this is what really motivates us forward. We, uh, we, uh, we, we think our business is a very difficult one. There are some easier businesses outside our own, uh, but uh, maybe not as passionate uh, as we have. Do we have headwinds? Absolutely. Uh, I think the industry has, has some headwinds and uh, we probably should face some of them collectively. Uh, if you think about the environment, for example, you know, our airplanes, they use uh, internal combustion engines that they tend to burn uh, bio, I mean, uh, tend to burn uh, fossil fuels. So uh, as an industry, we have, number one, to send the message clearly that uh, we're not the bad guys there. I mean, we're just uh, you know, collectively about two, two and a half percent of emissions. So that message, I think, is not clear yet to, uh, to the general public. But yes, as, uh, as we have been doing in the last several decades, we keep investing in making our airplanes more and more efficient. So um, anything related to those, uh, you know, environmental trading schemes or surtaxes taxes or anything like that, we should really, you know, fight against because we are an integral part of the world's economic development, and why not? Why not just say social development as well? Um, we are all under a difficult time. We are under the same crisis uh, that started back four years ago, and uh, the industry is still digesting some of the some of the leverage which was. You know, some artificial leverage which was out there a few years ago. So, uh, having said that, uh, we, we have an optimistic view about uh, the future. I, uh, things are not getting worse, things are relatively stable. We can even see some signs, we can even see some signs of recovery here and there. There are some new markets, uh, markets uh, in Latin America, Latin markets in Asia. Uh, where, you know, if the, if the infrastructure comes together on a timely basis, there is potential for hugely underserved uh, markets. So there are some opportunities out there. Uh, but of course, we need to get the world back to revamping and re-energizing uh, the global trade. Our industry is has a cause and consequence relationship with global trade and uh, the current crisis is really a job crisis that creates some protectionisms naturally in several countries and that tends to slow down global trade. So this is something of course that we also have to work against. We have to work against, you know, have to work in favor of enhancing global trade and therefore the need of people to move from place to place and uh, using our, our airplanes. I just uh, want to, uh, to finalize saying that it is in, uh, in exhibits like this one 
that I think the industry shows most of its re resilience and its, uh, its glamour. Why not to say glamour as well? We should be proud of what we do. Airplanes are not simple. Airplane equipment, you know, that uh, the equipments that are on our airplanes are not simple. They're very sophisticated pieces of engineering, and uh, we do something which is uh, a man cannot do. Somebody once told me, why, why is that men have this admiration for airplanes? And he said, well, this is because the airplane is the only machine that can actually do something the man, man cannot do. Usually machines optimize or multiply the, you know, the work or the, the things that a man can do, a person can do. But the airplanes, they, they do something we can't do. And of course, I, I discourage anybody from trying <laughs> after this lunch to do that. So, uh, yeah, and we are part of that. So, uh, we are very proud. I think all of us, you should be very proud. And I think with this pride and with this uh, determination, we will keep surviving. Everybody in this room is a survivor. And uh, I guess you know, most of us will be here years ahead to keep celebrating, to keep fighting, and keep surviving our industry. I think that's the best reward that each one of us can, can hope for. So with that, I thank you very much for your patience, and uh, if there are questions, I'll be more than pleased uh, to answer. Thank you very much.